Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you guys doing today? Hope everything is great where you are. Uh, here in Wilmington, North Carolina, it is an absolute miserable, 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 miserable day. It's been raining all day, pouring this morning. And I started thinking about the fact of living in the New York metro area my entire life. You have rainy days, right? We, you know, you wake up and it's just rainy all day. And, you know, people ask you, what's going to do tomorrow? Ah, it's going to rain all day. Never does that down here. You just don't get that, you know, you, you, it doesn't, nothing, it, it pours. It could pour like six times during the day. But then the sun comes out. So that's a lot different. Anyway, I am going to make a vi I received an email, by the way. Not a comment. I don't know who it was from. There was no name left. Uh, somebody was a little disappointed in my bird um, analysis yesterday concerning the albatross and thought I was like making a big joke about it. I thought I was really serious about it. I don't know what video that was for. It was a quick video I did yesterday. I think it had to do with the kickers, the jet kickers. And I opened up. And I, my point is, if you're out there watching right now, I just want you to know I was being really serious about it. So I apologize if you took any offense to that. Whew. Wow, really got to be careful, huh? Um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the what we're going to discuss here today is I'm just going to go through uh, Salah's press conference real quick. Just watched it. Uh, we'll go through it real quick. Um, to my cousin, I know my glasses are on top of my head. There is a chance that I may need them to read, and that's why they're there drives her crazy. And I think that's why I'm doing it now. So anyway, Salah's presser uh, lasted about probably 10, 12 minutes. I will try to remember to put a link uh, in the comment section. I will try to remember. If you've seen the links that I've posted, what I'm going to try to do is update them almost on a daily basis. So if there's any really good stuff I see out there, I think from yesterday I had Mosley's press presser and I had Quentin Williams one, which was great. Uh, Salah's yesterday presser, and then I'll change it to today's. You know, I'm going to try to keep changing uh, the links all the time. And then, of course, I have the um, Albatross cam there, just in case somebody didn't believe what I was saying. So anyway, today's presser real quick. Uh, we'll go through it. The first question he was asked is, what you can your team get out of? And there's some doozies here, but there are some doozies here, guys and girls. There are some doozies here. What can your team get out of this? Several practices with Green Bay and then the preseason game. In other words, this is a lot. What does your team get out of it, right? And you think to yourself, they're going against the, they're, they're themselves like constantly. Of course they're going to get out of this. And, you know, he asked... Uh, uh, Salah said, of course, they're going to get a lot out of it. He goes, number one, you're going against a championship team. You know, you get to see Rodgers. You're going against that, that system, which is, our, you know, our system pretty much, right? And, uh, you know, he answered it quickly, you know. The next question was, did he, uh, if he talked to the team about not making this a free-for-all, being on good behavior, uh, Salah said, No. They definitely know it already. He goes, I'll discuss it with them quickly, but they know it already. They need to work on their scheme and to work on their technique, their game. And they expect the Packers want to do the same. Everybody's preparing for the season, so he doesn't expect any problems like that. Any players not making the trip? Coming from Rich Samini, the god. Salah said, Rich... I'm waiting to hear any final reports, and when I get them, I'll give them to the press. He then will later go on to know that there's definitely one guy that he knows is not make, probably not making the trip. Oh, he may make the trip. I don't think he's making the trip. Uh, next question was your daily Zach Wilson question, if it was just one, but you'll see later on that, of course, they can't stop at one. Uh, just, uh, just what can Zach get out of going against the same team for several days? You're sitting there, and you got a couple hours, right? And you got to ask a question. And that's, this is the question you come up with. What can Zach get out of going against the same team for several days? He's going against his own team every friggin' day, you know. And now, of course, you want to, and that's what Salah said. 
you get to go against a different opponent. You're going against different players. You're going against diff- different speeds of players. You're going against different a different scheme. You know, you're going. You know, everything's different. There's def- there's this is a very different experience. And if you go against it one time, it's a nice experience. If you get to go against it a couple times, you actually get to learn. You know, you actually get to learn. And and I think it's it's a fantastic idea. You know, and I know they're doing it this week and they're doing it next week too. I think it's a great idea. I think it's the Eagles next week, right? I think it's a great idea. Um, how much does your relationship with Matt Lafleur go? In? This was a great question. He actually gave a really honest answer. How much does your relationship with Matt Lafleur go into what takes place during these practices? Uh, he, I say here, he gives a great honest answer. Pretty much, he said a lot. You know, they've talked. They've talked about what they're, you know, what you know, what can the other team do to help them prepare for the season. Um, you know, it's something like it could be something as simple as, can you do me a favor? Can you just tell, uh, you know, with the defense, can you tell uh, to g- have a little more pressure, a little more blitzing uh, put on uh, Zach? So, you know, as far as the offense is concerned, they both, you know, the same offense is going against, you know, LaFleur's offense and our offense. There's so many similarities. So, uh, yeah, but they, he said he's, he's talked to them several times. And they have sort of come up with, you know, what they would like to see the other team do to help them on both sides. So I think that was a great, great one. Then we had another Zacha Wilson question. And it was a doozy. Just what improvements has Salah seen in the past few weeks, including the Giant preseason game? And Salah said he's doing everything the same. The only difference he sees is that the questions that he's asking now are even deeper. They're, they're, they're more in depth. He, they, he, he is a sponge. He asks, I mean, it was, he had a smile on his face as Salah was talking about it. Why is the DB down here? Why the safety line up here and put, move to this? You know, he wants to know the answers to everything. And he asks a lot of questions. And Salah said, it's, you know, it's just very unique. It's very good. Will that guarantee him to be a great quarterback? course not but the bottom line is he's that way he prepares that way mentally and we know he's very accurate so now you start canceling off the boxes right you know what are you looking for and uh i think it's fantastic that he asks a lot of questions like that how long will he play he said he'd play at least the same as the first game and probably a couple more series so my guess is you're probably looking at a quarter and a half. I he didn't the way he made it sound because he opened up with this at least the same as the giant game, but he made it sound you know like you know like you know wouldn't it be double. So I don't think he'll play the whole entire first half. So my guess is he'll get the first quarter in, and maybe a couple series in the second half. And of course, how much they accomplish, how many times they're on the field. You know, if the Green Bay has a seven minute drive, you know, a lot can change. So. How much is it hurting Vera Tucker missing this much time? Again, he gave a really honest answer, and he said, you know, it has to be. You know, it's not a strike against the player. It's not a strike against Vera Tucker at all. But it's not helping. His preparation and uh, the continuity of the of the offensive line that, that he values immensely. He just thinks it's huge, you know, them getting that time together. So... Playing against Rodgers, how much can the team learn? Salah, they're in their third year of the same offense that we're implementing this season. They're in their third year. So he believes they can learn a lot. When the offense is sitting on the sideline and watching Green Bay's offense perform, they're going to see a lot of similarities. But they're also going to see a team that's probably crisper, that's more on target, more on time, and the plays that they're running that they're learning this season. Because a lot of the things they're going to see are, are, you know, maybe some twists here and there, but there's going to be a lot of the same things. So they're going to see a team, uh, you know, in their third year of what they're trying to, you know, what they're just learning over the last, you know, several months. So he thinks it'll help a lot. Uh, How do you feel about Morgan and White? And he made a really good point. As long as they've been with the team several years, you know, that was their first actual 
uh, performance against another team. It was their first preseason game. And for the Jets, that is, White's played uh, other preseason games, I think, you know, with Dallas. Um, and he thought the longer they played in the game, the better, the better they looked. And he's excited to see them how they'll play this week. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, then a guy from the press that must have been in the bathroom asked if Vera Tucker will, Vera Tucker will play at all in the last two games, which is a little bit of a newer part of the question. And then he asked, how do you think it's hurting him? <laughs> so amazing. Salah didn't flinch. He just answered it. And he said, you know, ho he's hoping to get him back for week three. He gave a really interesting answer, actually, when you, when you break it down. He's hoping to get him back for week three, but he's not concerned about week one. How, how do you read that? He's hoping to get him back for week three, but he's not concerned for week one. Put it in the comments how you heard that. I read it as he's hoping to get him back for week three, but he's playing week one. And that's a little bit rare. That's rare. If a rookie misses the entire preseason and to give him the start week one, the start week one, because you know Salah's not going to play games that much. He doesn't like mixing up the offensive line. He's been asked that many times about uh, Moses and uh, uh, George Vaughn. I can't believe I forgot the right tackle's name. Fan. On the right tackle, right? And he's asked, would you ever think about rotating them? He said, absolutely not. I'm not doing that. He believes in the, again, continuity is the word of the day of the team, of the offensive line. And he believes they should play. Um, you know they need to. You know, they have. They need to play together. But he did say he's not concerned for week one, so he believes. I guess he will be healthy for week one, and he believes he will play in week one. I will watch that again to make sure that's what he. I I, I wrote it down, sir. So I'm ninety nine percent sure that's what he said. But he said he's not concerned for week one. So we'll see how that plays out. How important is special teams to this team, and making the roster? Uh, the value of the roster, he says, how much can you help out on special teams, especially if you're not a starter? You know, and that's a good point. That's something we, you know, a lot of us, I don't really think about too much when you start getting down to final cuts. If you're a guy that is, you know, once that depth chart that's, you know, pretty much written in pen at that time comes out, you know, you have to look at that roster and you have to say to yourself, okay, this guy and this guy are about, you know, God, that's a tough decision. Well, one of them plays special teams. That guy's going to make the roster. You know, if one of them, one guy maybe has a slight edge over another guy, but he doesn't play special teams, that could hurt him. So, you know, if you play special teams, that's going to help you in that, that was final, you know, those final roster spots. How much, how important is it to teach, uh, oh, he's asked how important it was to teach cornerbacks and safeties not to be too grabby, too handsy. And he referred to the play, uh, which I discussed in my uh, breakdown of the Giant-Jet uh, preseason game, the Eccles play, that long play down the right sideline when Eccles got called for a pass interference, and they called pass interference, first and goal. Thank God the guy fumbled. Oh, that wasn't really – it wasn't at the two. I think it was like at the five or six. Then the guy, uh, Nazir, hit him the uh, – his helmet hit the ball carrier. And we recovered the fumble. But that play, he was talking about that play and specifically, and uh, which I didn't think was a pass interference. I really didn't think so. A little holding going on around the 15, you know, as they were getting running before the ball was in the air, but actual going up for the ball and everything, I didn't think so at all. But uh, he said, you know, he, I think he, you know, he, uh, he, said, he said guys have to know their routes. They have to feel good about where they are, where they're positioned. If they feel they've missed a step, they have to trust their ability, trust their ability to make up space. And he talks to DBs about that all the time. Don't panic. You know, if you think because you're in a certain situation, that's not the perfect situation, don't start getting handsy and grabby. So what went into cutting the kickers, cutting Chris and keeping Amendola? He thinks Chris... He gave, you know, 
typical answer. He thinks Chris is going to be a good kicker in the NFL one day. Uh, it's just a matter of roster space and having to make several cuts. So nothing really specific there. But uh, as it seems right now, I'm sure they'll be bringing somebody else in. But right now, uh, it's Amendola. Uh, how important is your relationship going back? I have a video about kickers that I made yesterday. Um, and if anybody saw that, if you disagree with me, uh, definitely leave a comment there. Because I feel really strongly about that. I'm not being crazy about the last few years where we've, how we've gone into seasons with the kicker situation. Anyway, how important is your relationship going back with Matt now being here together? Um, you know, going because they've known each other for so long, and now here they are. And he said it's just pretty cool. He you know put a smile on his face. You know, he didn't really answer it in depth. He just said it's pretty cool. He then uh, was asked if they've made any roster cuts yet. And he said no. He still has to sit down with Joe, and they, you know, still have to go over everything. And that was it. That was it in a nutshell. The Sala Presser. And uh, if there's anything you guys want to add, any questions that you guys have, or any comments you you might have, or any disagreements you may have, love hearing those. Love hearing those. I'm an easy guy to disagree with. Uh, feel free to leave comments. And of course, like, like, like if you can, and subscribe if you haven't yet. Okay? Thanks, guys. Have a great, great day. And I was going to say stay dry, but I'm sure it's nice and sunny where you are right now. Have a great day, and uh, we'll add something. If there's anything else to add today, if anything comes out, I'll put a video up later on. If not, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great one. Thank you very much.